Hey guys, this is Mr. Van Lo, and this is your second lesson on describing fields uh, for topic 10.1. Your learning objectives are to be able to map fields using potential and to describe the connection between equipotential surfaces and field lines. So first we need to define our equipotential surfaces and they are just an area around a charged object where gravitational or electric potential is equal. Okay, so what that means is that the distance from the object needs to be constant. Okay, so the representation of an equipotential surface uh, is usually going to be given as a circle or a sphere for round objects. Uh, if the object is not round, as you can imagine, this gets a little bit trickier. Uh, it also gets a little bit more complicated where we have multiple objects, as you will see just a little bit later in this lecture. Okay. Uh, so, when we look at our surfaces then, we move a body to a new equipotential surface, uh, we have to do work. And that work can be calculated by the change in potential or the change in radius. Remember that they are closely related. Uh, that radius there is just the distance, uh, center to center, between our test charge or test mass and the object uh, that we're testing. Okay, we're gonna take a look at field strength and potential here. Uh, gravitational field strength is linked to potential by this equation. And this is in your data booklet, both for gravity and for uh, electric field strength, okay? Uh, obviously, the potential is going to be electric potential and gravitational potential, uh, but the formulation of the equation is the same. So, whenever you have two things changing in what appears to be a function, you could probably guess that calculus is going to be involved, and that is the case here. So our blue line is a tangent to the graph of potential versus radius, and the slope of that tangent line will be equal to field strength for gravitational and electric fields, okay? So uh, the electric potential there uh, could be, sorry, the potential on this graph could be electric or gravitational, doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, let's discuss the relationship between equipotential and field lines. First thing uh, you need to know is they're always perpendicular to each other. So this diagram shows us uh, at the equipotential and field lines around an object. It doesn't matter if it's gravitational or uh, electric, although we could probably assume here that it's gravitational and that would be fine. Could also be a negatively charged object. The arrows are pointing in, doesn't matter. Okay, so recall that the work done to change equipotential is a function of the distance between uh, the objects. Your test object, whether it's a test mass or a test charge, and the, uh, the body whose uh, field strength you're attempting to measure. So per perpendicularity is just a consequence of the conditions that are required to do work on the test charge, okay? Path doesn't matter. It is strictly a function of radius. Uh, if you want a more detailed explanation of what's going on here, crack a book and um, they, give, they give more information, but I think we've covered the fundamentals here. 
Okay, uh, SOCOS has a few examples of various different equipotential and field line examples. And here's the first one. Here we have two equal positive charges. And the electric field between these two charges is going to be zero. And this convention uh, should be familiar to you. Field arrows point away from positive charges. Uh, I also want to note that we could look at this diagram and we would know that our charges were equal by the number of field lines coming off of our charged particles. Okay, so we have here the same field density uh, for both, both objects, both charged objects. So we could assume from this diagram that the field strength here was equal. Also the fact that it's symmetrical Perfectly symmetrical is another indicator that we have equal charges. Okay, so here we have the equipotential and field lines for a positive charge and a negative charge. The negative charge here must be Q2 because uh, the field lines are pointing into our charged object. Uh, we should also note that our charges have equal magnitude, and we would know that because our equipotential lines, our surfaces, are the same. Okay, so you can see that they're the same from Q1 and Q2. Okay, so that tells us we are going to have equal charges here. Uh, the other thing we could look at to know that these charges were equal is the field line density. Field line density is just an indicator of how strong a uh, relative uh, charge or gravitational field is. In this case, we're looking at charge though. Okay, as I've already stated, field arrows do indeed point into negative charges. Okay, next slide. Here we have two unequal charges. Um, they're both positive but uh, Q1 is going to have a smaller charge than Q2 because Q2 has a higher field density around it. In other words, it has more arrows. You'll also note that the equipotential lines for Q1 are closer together. So our equipotential surfaces are closer together, suggesting a smaller charge. Okay, here we have one positive charge and one larger negative charge. And by a larger, uh, we're talking about the magnitude of the charge. Okay, and we would know that because of the higher field density, but also because of uh, the larger spacing between our equipotential surfaces. Okay, so these are just a few examples, but don't be surprised if some others get thrown at you at some point, and you should be able to recognize them. You should probably also be able to draw equipotential surfaces or field lines. Okay, here we have parallel plates, and these are very important in the study of electric fields. And the reason for that is because uh, the area between the plates, or volume rather, is going to have a very uniform electrical field. So if you wanted to study uh, forces on charges, sorry, forces on charged particles, just as an example, you would want this highly uniform field. Near the edges of the plate, you can see that the field becomes less uniform. It becomes distorted. And that's just due to the nat nature of electric fields. Inside the field, sorry, inside the plates, between the plates, um, I should perhaps change the wording there. I, I will do that. The field between the plates is given by uh, E is equal to V divided by D. And of course, we will define those variables. 
where E is electric field, V is potential difference, and D is simply the distance between the plates. Okay, quick lecture, my favorite kind and probably yours. So you should now be able to map fields using potential and you should be able to describe the connection uh, between equipotential surfaces and field lines. I will have a handout for you. You should complete it. And uh, these are my sources. There you go. Have a great day, gentlemen.